The tactics of the left-wing activist and uh, advocacy group ACORN under investigation in states all across the country. The group has close ties to President Obama. We've covered the actions of ACORN extensively here on this broadcast and a new controversy over whether groups like ACORN should continue to, f to receive federal funding. That is the topic of tonight's debate, Face Off. Joining me now, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, good to have you with us, and Congressman mm -hmm. Barney Frank, good to have you with us. You. He is the chairman, of course, of the House Financial Services Committee. Well, let, let's start with uh, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, your colleague, uh, uh, Congresswoman Bachman, uh, put forward an amendment in a bill that you initially supported uh, that uh, would have removed uh, organizations like ACORN that is, those indicted or convicted of voter fraud, uh, to prevent them from receiving taxpayer money. Uh, uh, you initially supported it, then and approved of it, and then you reversed position. Why? Well, I we were at the end of a very long markup on a very important bill dealing with uh, stopping predatory lending, and it did not get the attention I should have given it. I looked at it. I thought it was okay. I didn't read it carefully. An hour later, I did get a chance to read it carefully and reversed. You said indicted or convicted. That's the critical difference. We did pass an amendment in the House that said if anybody in any organization, this isn't ACORN specific, any organization in America where you're convicted of election fraud, then you are knocked out. But I think it's a great mistake in this, in this country to say that if you're simply, if any employee is indicted, that you lose your funding. That allows any prosecutor anywhere who's got an axe to grind to indict someone. The other point I want to make, though, is this, Lou. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to be accused of funding ACORN. It was the Bush administration that funded ACORN. I went and looked at the record because I can guarantee you that no congressional enactment that I'm aware of has ever earmarked a penny for ACORN. From 2001, when George Bush became president, until 2008, the Bush administration provided over $13 million to ACORN. It was the Bush administration that maintained ACORN has two operations. They have a certified housing counseling group. I didn't even know this. And the Bush administration funded it. So the question I would have to my Republican colleagues is, did you try to get George Bush to cut off the funding? They got funding for counseling, for predatory lending. Well, let's do that. Let's ask Congresswoman Bachman. Congresswoman? Well, I, I, what I am concerned about is the eligibility criteria of organizations who have access to government grants. ACORN has received approximately $53 million since the early 1990s. Now, between the stimulus and the budget that was passed by President Obama, they have access potentially to eight and a half billion dollars. This is serious money for an organization that's been under indictment in over 12 states. They have a pattern of indictment for voter fraud. It's very concerning. No organization has a right to federal taxpayer sure. money. And I think Congress has the fiduciary responsibility to set the bar very high for organizations that well, want to receive I noticed, the taxpayer well, money. I noticed that Congressman Bach didn't answer your question. If it is wrong, and I, I'm appalled by some of what I've learned, why didn't the Republicans, they were in the majority in Congress, in fact, until 2007, and George Bush was president, and when you had a Republican majority in both houses, and George Bush is president, millions of dollars went to the Acorn Housing Counseling Group. The other thing I would say is this, the amendment didn't say if there's a pattern of indictments. It said if any single individual in any organization in America is indicted by any prosecutor, the funding ends. By the way, we substituted one that said conviction. If there is a conviction of an individual, then either that individual gets fired or they lose the money. We also accepted an amendment offered by one of the Republicans that called for much more transparency in who gets the funds. But again, my question is, where were the Republicans when George Bush was giving the Acorn Housing Counseling Entity millions of dollars? All right, Congresswoman, the chairman persists. Well, I, I would agree. I think that if there were indictments going on during those years, that they should also have to come under the criteria that I'm proposing. They should not have had access. Did you I came to in, cut I, it off? I came into Congress in January of 2004, or two, I'm sorry, 2007. And from that point on, I've been looking at this issue in the Financial Services Committee, and I think that it would be wise to set the criteria, not just for ACORN, but for any organization. We need to have a high bar. I agree. No one has right to access. And I, I think agree. indictment is not a low standard. It needs oh. to be a high standard. I think the single indictment of any individual is too well. We had Tom DeLay I, indicted. I, well, I, I don't agree. I, I, I don't well, think that's I true because, Tom, because ACORN finish? has had a pattern of indictment, no, not not, just one. Excuse but they've me. had a pattern in excuse state me, after Michelle, state after state. 
But that's not what your amendment said. And we're making laws for the whole country. Your amendment said a single indictment anywhere of any individual. APAC, the Israeli uh, pro-Israel lobbying group, they had two people indicted. Those were just cut, dismissed. We had uh, Tom Mr. DeLay. Mr. Chairman. Under, I'm sorry, no, please don't interrupt. I know you don't want to hear this, but Tom DeLay, the leader of the Republican Party, was under indictment for a long time. He continued to be a voting member of the House. You didn't say a pattern. And the other thing I would say, you said you came to Congress in 2007. In that year, George Bush's administration gave ACORN $1.6 million. Did you ask George Bush to cut off the funding? I don't want to put every organization in America in jeopardy. If any prosecutor anywhere indicts any single individual well, and lets that indictment sit for years without prosecuting it. Can I ask you both a question uh, on this? And that is, why should the federal government, the American taxpayer, be funding ACORN or any organization like it? Why in the world is the American taxpayer being put on the hook for, for these uh, so-called uh, uh, non-profits that are doing work that is really a matter for the political parties, if they must, but secondly, if it goes to the issue of housing, we have a de an executive department, uh, the Housing uh, Urban Development. We have plenty of agencies, organizations, and federal employees responsible for this. Why should the taxpayer be funding anything like ACORN or any organization uh, coming forward as a, as a, as a nonprofit? Can I start with you, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Well, that's a Republican philosophy to some extent, Lou, which is you should contract things out. I agree with you. We could hire people to do this. But there has been this Republican philosophy that you want to keep down permanent employees of the government. Um, and, and it, you, you're well, right, wait a Mr. Chairman, let me, you, you just I'm, said that George Bush and the Republicans have been funding ACORN. It doesn't seem like a particularly Republican view. But it is. No, it is the Republican. It, one, I didn't say that they've been funding ACORN. I'm reading you the numbers. Every year in the Bush administration, ACORN received, the ACORN housing operation, more than a million dollars. They have a separate housing operation, a separate other operation. Some people think they're not separate, but that was the Bush case. The reason, I, the reason that people do these private groups, you said, why doesn't HUD do it? There is this Republican philosophy in general that says contract out. Don't have the bureaucracy grow up. Hire private sector entities to do things to keep the government from growing. I would be very happy instead to expand the role of the government. But again, I want to stress, this was when the Republicans were in control of both houses of Congress right. and the administration, and that's when ACORN was getting millions of dollars. As you know, Mr. Chairman, I'm no greater admirer of the Republican uh, Party than I am the Democratic. I understand that, Michelle. but I'm talking to Ms. Bachman. Why didn't she ask George Bush, when she was a member of Congress in 2007, Michelle. to stop giving ACORN a million dollars? Hey. Uh, Congre I Congresswoman, if you would. Why should we be funding anything like ACORN, any non-profit? Uh, non this is crazy to even be thinking about billions upon billions of dollars uh, for the American taxpayer to be handing out to non-profits over which they have no control or influence. At least you would think that there would be a semblance of uh, uh, concern in this country that we have accountability if there is such a thing. Uh, through our federal government and our federal agencies. Lou, certainly that's exactly correct because we simply don't have the money anymore. The federal government has overcommitted itself to expenditures and you're right, why should the federal government have to take tax money away from its citizens to go and register people? That should be a function of the political parties. That's not necessarily the duty of the federal government and I would agree with you. Again, we're talking about a potential of access for, to ACORN or other similar situated groups of 8.5 billion dollars in grants. This is an enormous amount of money that we simply don't have and I agree with you we need to look at the premise and maybe get out of this business altogether. We will have to respond to sure. $8 billion. That's assuming that ACORN, again, the Bush administration funded ACORN narrowly for housing counseling and predatory lending. Um, and I agree with you by the way that some of these things could be better done by expanding the government but we're told contract out, and this is an example of that philosophy, but the notion that they're eligible for $8 billion is nonsense. And it's as a matter of fact, I'm sorry, Michelle, why do you keep interrupting? I'm sorry you don't like what I'm saying, but the fact is that they, if you look at what their organization does, housing right. counseling, under the administration, the Bush, they've been getting about a million dollars a year. You didn't object when they got a million dollars from Bush. Right. You can object now, but it's not $8 billion. Congresswoman, you get the last word. Very quickly. Thank, thank you, Lou. I do object, and I do object to expanding government, to shift it from nonprofit to government. We just need to get out of this business altogether and stop spending the money. Congresswoman, we thank you very much. Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, Congressman Barney Frank. Thank, thank you both you. for being here.
Thank you, Luke.